think uh, pan India could mean many things. It could, I, I think people uh, think if a company is present in all South Indian markets, it's not pan India. But uh, certainly each market has its own complexities and its own uh, ways in which you have to do business, its own um, you know, dynamics in terms of customer preferences and, and how things happen on the ground. So I think it's more about establishing that we can do business in multiple different cities and not so much in which zone of the country it may be in per se. We have specifically picked uh, these markets because we feel the dynamic in these markets makes sense to us. They're all driven by uh, IT sector. The percentage of uh, you know white collar uh, jobs uh, is extremely high, and that seems that is the target demographic for us. Um, a lot, more, many of the customers take home loans. So in general, uh, it's a very transparent market. All of these three, and that is why we like uh, doing business here. Also, they're not extremely high-end sort of uh, markets. And I think that also helps when an organization like us is looking to scale. Um, you know, going for much larger uh, price point and so on is a different ballgame. Uh, and I think we have shown that we can actually scale uh, in terms of the area that we're delivering, the number of uh, new projects that we're signing up, individual projects if you're looking at um, and also the number of units that get, get that get constructed for which we are selling, collecting, handing over, registering units. So um, I think that's what we're looking at in terms of scaling up. And we also firmly believe that each market has its own set of relationships and its own level of you know, inherent risk in each market. So we've taken the call that these are the markets that we want to play in. Uh, given the size of the economy of each of these markets, I think we also have the potential to uh, you know, expand our growth within these markets itself without necessarily, uh, you know, running into overall scale issues. Um, so it remains to be seen in future if we'd like to expand to other markets, say, uh, in the north, like, say, Mumbai, NCR, Pune, and so on. But currently, that's not on our radar. Uh, and I also feel that, um, you know, um, though it requires its own, you know, mindset change if one is to get into those markets. So for now, we are looking at uh, our markets of focus in the south and uh, you know we, we can always evaluate in the future. So for the office sector, uh, first of all, I'd uh, you know I want to just put some context to that. Today we have uh, around eight and a half million square feet of operational space. Uh, we still have some leasing to do, about 1.25 million square feet of leasing. Uh, a lot of that vacancy is in the SEZ space, which we, which is a little more challenging than non-SEZ space. But nevertheless, our team is able to make consistent progress and uh, reduce that number quarter on quarter. Uh, obviously, we would have liked it to be a little faster, but since there, there doesn't seem to be any communication from the government on extending SEZ privileges, even in the form of the Desh bill, so that has led to overall, you know, sort of slowness in that particular sector. That said, our outlook for office is uh, it is still a market and it is still a sector that has a lot of promise for India. In general, there is not a lot of grade A uh, office space across the country uh, in office. And there is a lot of demand for that. Um, uh, if you look even globally, I think India is the only bright spot where people are physically coming back to the office, whether it is in a hybrid format or all days of the week or whatever it may be. Um, in our country, uh, office uh, occupancy, if you physical occupancy on ground is actually increasing, whereas it is still in the doldrums across the Western world. So um, demand for uh, building office space and maybe investing into office space is still fairly strong, even with institutional investors. So I think from that perspective, we are still looking for um, you know, new lands. Uh, we are willing to partner with um, institutional investors for uh, office construction and uh, holding and leasing out the portfolio as well. And our aim is to eventually grow our office portfolio in these same key markets where we have a focus and grow to the point where we can consider whether we'd like to do a REIT or maybe a sizable uh, you know, uh, share of revenue, basically, uh, where we have options, whether it is REIT or you know, change, uh, whether it is um, uh, you know, teaming up with additional partners, whatever it may be. I think there's a lot of promise in the segment. Yeah, so 
Hyderabad is has been on our radar for a while. We have actually entered the market on the residential front. Um, on the office side, I would say, you know, by the time we were looking at entering it, there was already a lot of oversupply of office space. So even today, uh, that market does have oversupply of office space. In fact, on the ground today, um, the rents, et cetera, in Hyderabad are extremely competitive, which is also probably the reason why there's a lower cost of occupancy for tenants. That said, the government of Hyderabad has been very uh, proactive in terms of putting in infrastructure in place. So it is certainly coming up as a strong contender to Bangalore. Um, so we are focused on that market and trying to get the right kind of deals in place for Hyderabad. We may be looking strongly at residential today, but we are our eyes are open, um, you know, for uh, any kind of, uh, you know, uh, development that we can do in Hyderabad since we have multiple domains, whether it is residential, hospitality, retail or office. Um, we have the capability to do also mixed use developments where there, there, is, there are components of each of these uh, different uses. So overall, I think the growth story is good for Hyderabad as well. I mean, that's why we are positive about it, even from a residential standpoint. Uh, it remains to be seen, you know, who your counterparty is, what, what are the deal economics. And I think that is what has uh, maybe held us back a little bit because some of the um, you know, some of the economics of, of what you're trying to sign up don't always uh, line up with what our expectations are. Um, you know, our business is a capital intensive business. Residential for now, given the cycle that we're in, does not require too much capital in general. Um, and we've also been able to pay down um, the whatever little residential debt that we had. But on the commercial side, especially if we are holding office assets, even though we do uh, build and sell office space in a strata uh, manner as well, but typically uh, any portfolio that we want to hold on from a leasing standpoint, whether it is office or retail or hospitality, is very capital intensive. Many of our projects we've been able to fund with our own internal accruals and, uh, you know, um, yeah, we've been able to manage on that side or taking construction financing and then replacing it with uh, lease rental uh, discounting in terms of debt. Um, so that said, uh, it's always great to have a partner, especially because many of the partners that uh, are out there also bring a lot of expertise in terms of, uh, you know, tenant relationships. Uh, maybe sustainability uh, measures um, in general. So, and of course, the capital that they're bringing to the table. So we're always open. Uh, in the end, again, like I mentioned, even when you're looking for land, the same thing in terms of a partner. Um, is it the right kind of partner? Do the, do the deal terms make sense? And I think our uh, company and organization DNA is to be pretty conservative. So, you know, if it's, it's all about the meeting of minds and ensuring that, uh, you know, both sides are uh, equally taken care of in the deal. And we are also getting the kind of the kind of deal terms that we expect as an organization that has been very stable financially and been very conservative and shown growth. think uh, the Indian market has a lot to be as worried about. You know, um, what they're saying is specific to what they see in their markets, maybe in the US and in, say, Western Europe. Um, people not coming to the office or not wanting to come to the office is, is uh, you know, uh, very prevalent there for, for multiple reasons. Maybe they spend too much time commuting or maybe they don't find it valuable to come into the office. You know, there is a, a huge cultural shift also that is happening today, which is a big part of the conversation. Uh, so naturally, um, you know, the, the, the value of real estate may be in question in some of those areas. But um, I think it's all part of a cycle. Uh, you know, um, sometimes the pendulum swings too far in one direction or the other. And at some point, it will come back to some kind of normal. Obviously, the the normal that we thought of before may not be what it is going to be in future. So there, there could be some changes, but overall to say that there won't be a commercial real estate market in future seems um, very unlikely. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I think maybe it was about uh, space that was overbuilt or maybe was used in a different manner than before. Like today, people can work remotely, um, but maybe they need uh, less space than they did before, or the type of space that they used before is not so great now. There's also a big focus on sustainability and ESG. So uh, people want to maybe upgrade their spaces or improve the tenant experience. So there's a lot of work to be done on that front. Uh, and also all these markets have a huge, uh, you know, existing uh, commercial real estate portfolios, which I think is extremely different from India. Like I mentioned earlier, we, we are just building out a lot of our commercial, uh, a lot of our grade A office space. So, um, you know, um, and a lot of what is there today is fairly new. Uh, there, there, it hasn't aged too much in terms of uh, um, the construction quality or whatever. So I think in India to say um, that is going to be in a meltdown is not uh, relevant in my opinion.